Today we're going behind the scenes with Dan Winters style photo shoot. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to Flirt. My name is Aaron Nays. You can find me on Twitter at AKNays. We don't have Dan Winters in the studio, but I love his photography. And uh, recently, a buddy of mine, Sam Luna, who's an awesome musician and uh, he's starting to be a model. Some people get it all, you know, they just get it all. We're going to link to Sam's music below because he's actually really, really talented. And um, he came into the studio this past weekend and uh, we want to do some photo shoots for his new modeling career as well. Um, so we did some fo sh photographs inspired by Dan Winters. We did some in more like a Terry Richardson style. So I'm going to show you this uh, photograph. It's inspired by this one of... Um, Tom Hanks that I really, really love. The image is awesome. And we're going to show you guys how we did the lighting and then we're going to edit it here in Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get into it because we got a lot to do, a lot to cover today. It's very exciting. Okay, so here is Sam. You can see he did an awesome job. Um, we'll just zoom all the way into this, all the way into his eyeballs. Um, this was shot with a 70 to 200 lens. You can see this is straight out of the camera. So it's super sharp. Um, you can see every pore, um, which is great. This is done in in a style that we basically rip from Dan Winters and um, don't feel like doing this is is wrong well first of all don't judge me for doing it but this is a great way to learn um, if someone has a lighting style um, and you're like wow that looks really cool um, you know imitating someone else's lighting style is a really great way to learn and I do it all the time and um, just make sure you uh, actually say where you got that from like don't be like oh I invented this because anyone who knows uh, will just call you out on it. So um, for the record, this was inspired by Dan Winters. And uh, this is the photograph that we were inspired by. And it's of Tom Hanks. And uh, I really love this photograph. It's very cool. And you can see they're very similar. The colors are a bit different, but we're gonna fix that in, um, in Photoshop here. Um, Dan Winters doesn't use the Photoshops. He uses his awesome self and makes these images. He shoots on um, film as well. So like the uh, the Kodak film he uses has a, a greenish tint here. Um, so let's show you guys the lighting diagram. I created a lighting diagram for you as well because it's kind of complex, the lighting in this one. Um, and again, this is, this is the lighting I came up with. So basically here was the entire process. Um, it was look at the image by Dan Winters kind of try to analyze it and then reproduce it. And so we'll talk about a couple of the things that I saw in this and then how I decided to reproduce these objects as well. Okay, so one thing we've got is uh, our, our headshot of Tom is, is lit from the side. Um, we're lit from the side, his ear is actually not lit. So you know it's, the light is not coming around from the front at all, it's definitely from the side. It's a little bit bigger as well. So I was thinking maybe a beauty dish or something like that. You can see the light source here is a little bit harder, like on his jacket. Um, and so I was thinking maybe another light as well to kind of light up this area. So you've got one light on his face and one light here. It might just have been one light, but I decided to use two. Now to light up this side of his face, you could use like a spot grid or something like that, like a seven inch reflector with a 10 degree spot balanced well just to light up this side of his face so it wouldn't hit his ear. I didn't go that route, um, so my face on this side is a little bit darker, but I'm okay with that. Okay, the next thing we have is our shadows we don't want completely black. They're pretty dark here, but we don't want them to be completely black. Um, so I used a fill light. I just shot a light uh, into the back wall to do that. Um, and then we have this nice gradient from light uh, to dark on the backdrop which I you know, basically figured if you had a strip box right down here, um, that would produce that gradient. So this is Dan Winder's photo and it's awesome. Um, and then this is what we've done. And again, this is straight out of the camera guys. So this is absolutely not retouched in, in any way. Um, and I'm pretty happy with what we got. The colors aren't the same. Um, so we're gonna do that in Photoshop and we're gonna add some textures and things like that. So this is a result of this lighting diagram, which I'm gonna show you here. Oh yeah, and also by the way, uh, this side of his face right here, you can see is, is interestingly rounded. It gets a little bit darker. So I'm gonna show you guys how we did that. Okay, this is the lighting setup that we used. Um, lighting diagram provided by lightingdiagram.com. Um, our model is here. This is the strip box that's underneath the bottle, uh, uh, basically hitting the gray backdrop. Um, and producing that, that nice gradient that goes from, you know, from light uh, to dark. 
Okay, the model is sitting on a stool here. We have a large V-flat here, a black V-flat, which is blocking a little bit of light from the beauty dish that we had. And that's what's creating this like really, really faint shadow on the other side of his face. It's really, it rounds the subject in a really interesting way, and I like it a lot. Then we had another, um, another flag up top, which basically kept the light from hitting uh, too high. It kept the light a lot more even. So that light basically was just like kind of flagging this. His forehead was a little bit bright, so we just kind of brought it down with this flag as well. Flag's just like a big black piece of cloth or cardboard or whatever. It blocks light. So we have um, our light here is a beauty dish. This is our other light in an 11 inch reflector. I shot with a 7200 back here. And then we had another light hitting a back wall for fill. Um, the light that we had on the backdrop, this was, <coughs> excuse me, this was gelled a quarter CTO, so it's a little bit warm. And then the light we had on our subject was gelled a quarter CTB, so it's a little bit cooler, so it balanced them out. Or else, if you only use warm gels, some people's skin can get like really, really warm and just not look very good at all. Um, so this is what we've got. Now you can see Dan Winters has a little bit more of a greenish um, hue to his image, and the skin tone is not, um, you know, the skin tone is kind of desaturated looking and a little bit more white looking. It's a little bit more specular as well. All that stuff you can do in Photoshop, you don't have to get it exactly right in, in, in camera. Although you're awesome if you do, but I didn't do that. So whatever, I'm good at Photoshop. I'm gonna use all my skills. <laughs> I don't have to just do it in camera. That's what Photoshop is for. All right, let's go ahead and see what we can do with the backdrop. Um, let's grab a hue saturation layer. I'm gonna grab a, um, a color here. Let's just grab whatever the yellows. Uh, we'll grab an eyedropper and kind of grab these colors. Getting this eyedropper uh, shows what color you should grab. So like if, if I click on his face, you can see this little slider here change uh, in different places of the image. So that's the color that's actually going to change is the one you click the eyedropper on. Okay, now we can just change the hue a little bit. We can get to a green. Maybe we'll pump down the saturation and the brightness a little bit. All right, and we're looking for a similar green that's in this photo. And again, I'm not gonna copy this photo exactly. I'm just gonna show you if you wanted to, that's how you do it. Okay, let's make Tom invisible for a minute. Um, you can see that worked really well on the backdrop, uh, but it also worked really well on Sam's face. So I'm going to use a layer mask now to mask that away. All right, now if you did wanna do this straight out of the camera, um, I probably would have used a gel with a little bit more green. I wanted to go a little bit warm instead of greenish. Um, and then you could really probably just mess with your white balance on your camera, uh, maybe to go to tungsten to get a bit more of this effect. Um, but again, I was like, you know, do I spend an hour doing it on a photo shoot or do I just do it in Photoshop? Because, well, I know Photoshop. All right. <laughs> I want a shirt that says, I know Photoshop. People come up to me on the street like, really? Wow, it's amazing. Do you teach it or anything like that? Yes, I do. <laughs> There's a site called flern.com. Okay, there we go. We've taken this green out and um, that looks great. So the green is in the backdrop now. Is it similar? Yeah, there's probably a little bit of blue in there, but it's not a big deal. You just go to your reds too, and then you can pump a little bit of blue in there in there as well. I mean, you can change this to whatever color you want now because his face is masked out. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so we have that background effect. Now on his skin, let's just change. We're going to grab another effect. I'm going to grab a, let's use selective color because I almost never use it and I like it. So whatever. <laughs> We're going to grab the reds and I'm going to pump the blacks and just kind of like pull those down. Um, so we're pulling the blacks out of our reds and um, let's put a little bit less yellow and we're gonna put a little cyan in those as well. Okay, so let's make Tom invisible now. And you can see kind of the difference that made there. And uh, we'll make Tom back visible again. I think this is really cool. Now, on top of this, I think this is a nice uh, base. And then we're gonna pump some white back over top. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna make a new layer. Um, you can do this in many, many ways. Um, I'm gonna try channels because we don't do these a lot in, on Florin because they're kind of, I don't know, a lot of people don't like channels, but I'm gonna show you guys, they're really not that scary. You can make great selections out of them. So I'm gonna duplicate my blue channel because we have a really nice contrast in the face. You can see red just kind of shows everything. Blue, you get a really nice contrast. So we're gonna click and drag 
the blue channel to a pretty blue copy. I'm gonna grab my levels and we're just going to take this midpoint and bring it to the right a little bit. What that's gonna do is it's going to, basically when you turn a channel into a selection, it selects the lighter parts. So I've made the darker parts invisible, so what is going to get selected now is only the lighter parts of the image. So if I command click on that, you can actually see the lighter parts get selected. Okay, now on a layer above there, what you can do is just fill this with white if you wanna do that. So I hit command delete to fill with white, or you can just grab a brush tool and paint white. Do either way you want. Okay, so now we have that white on the face, which is kind of nice. We'll put a layer mask on that as well. So if you guys have been watching for Learn for a long time, you'd be like, well, you, could you use Blend If to do the same thing? And yeah, you could totally use Blend If. Um, it's, you know, there are always many ways to do everything in Photoshop. All right, and let's layer mask out this place a little bit more. And we're just gonna lower the opacity because I don't want it to be so much. Now, if you wanna kind of exaggerate that effect a little bit more, I'll show you guys this trick, which is kind of nice. Take your blue copy, duplicate that once more, and then really just kind of exaggerate that. Let's bring the lights up. There we go. And this is just gonna grab the highest of the highs. See, it's just those really high highlights. Command click on that to turn it into a selection. And then on a new layer, we're just gonna grab our brush tool again and paint on there. Remember, I said that the, uh, the Tom Hanks was a little bit more specular. Well, this brings back that specularity. Can you see that? And it's just on those highlights. All right, so we have without the white, just like that. And then, well, there's nothing on that later. We added the white and then we added those specular highlights on them as well, which made that really, really nice effect. So we have a nice desaturated light face and uh, the green backdrop. And we're getting pretty close to, um, we're getting pretty close to Mr. Hanks over here. All you have to do, let's just grab a curves adjustment layer. Just pull a little bit of the reds out. Um, it's not a big deal, but if you wanna grab some reds, let's grab this and just kinda drag that down a little bit. So you can drag a particular area and just kinda like drag that down a little bit. And let's go back to our RGB and make that a little bit brighter. Very nice. I'll lower the opacity because I think that was a little bit too much green in the face. There we go. We've taken the reds out and uh, I think we're looking pretty great. So let's go ahead and make that invisible. I want to crop this in a bit because we don't need all that. All right, there we go. This is the Aaron Nace crop, okay? I don't need, <laughs> I don't need the Dan Winters crop. I've done the Aaron Nace crop. This is the crop that I prefer. Um, and then we're gonna bring in these guys, which is really cool, um, just to kind of finish the image off. There we go, we'll bring that in. We'll bring this in. And these are available as pro textures, by the way. This is in the paper library. Um, all these three are in the pro textures, um, which we'll link to below. And you can bring these guys in and add texture. Like if we change this from normal down here to like soft light, let's hit shift command U to desaturate that. Um, you can see, you can use it to add like texture there in the backdrop. Um, let's just like lower the opacity there again. We'll change that to soft light. Shift command U will desaturate it. Lower the opacity of that as well. There we go. And let's see, I'll just hit Command U, bring the lightness down on that. All right, and we'll use this one as well. Let's rotate it around. We're almost done here, guys. There we go. And we'll change that to soft light, Shift Command U. Cool, so we have like a nice texture. Let's go ahead and group the three of those. Command G, put a layer mask on that group, and then you can just layer mask it away because we don't want this nasty texture on our subject because it's gonna make his skin look incredibly dirty and weird. So you make sure you layer mask that away from your subject or they might not be your friend anymore. There we go. But you can see this is on the backdrop there. It adds that like really nice texture and makes it look like you have a very expensive backdrop, even though you don't, you just have some paper. Um, but hey, <laughs> it looks pretty good to me. So this is our result, guys. Again, this is very quick and we just did it live right now. Um, the real version might take a little bit longer, but I think we did a pretty awesome job and uh, maybe we would do Dan Winters proud. Maybe not, he might try to sue me. Either way, he's fine with me. <laughs>
<laughs> that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this photoshop tutorial um be sure to check out we have a lot more and uh, we'll link to these textures down below yesterday we posted a link to our testimonials if you guys have purchased a pro tutorial or just have awesome stuff to say about flern um leave a testimonial and we'll give you guys a reward coupon for that so thanks so much for watching flern we're done i'm no photoshop for me anymore i'm done i quit no more bye guys My mom is here visiting from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Chicago, but we're in Chicago. <laughs> say hi to the Flern family. Hello, family. Hello, family. Some say Aaron invented himself in Photoshop, but as his mother, I'm here to tell you that's not true. <laughs> We've been watching a lot of Top Gear lately. <laughs> that was your Clarkson impression. Thanks, mom. You're welcome.